Okay, it's scary chart time on the channel, something we haven't done in a while. Take a look at this data from the Federal Reserve Survey of Consumer Finances. Median net worth for American families in 1998 versus 2013. From 2013 dollars, so this is adjusted for inflation, but you're going to see first of all that for all families averaged, they lost more than 20% of their net worth during that period, which I find to be a little bit bizarre because I've heard about how much productivity we've gained as uh, gains we've had as a society. We have far better technology as a society. Our economy has continued to modernize. Why would we have lost a fifth of all of the wealth that our families have overall? Now that's a horrifying stat. But it's not nearly as horrifying as when you actually dig a centimeter deeper and you break us up into e uh, income groups. If you're seeing there, the lower class has lost 26% of their net worth. Now, the actual dollar value that they've lost is much lower because, because, of course, the lower class in America has never had much net worth. That's net worth. That's not like the cash you have under your bed. That's the value that you have as a family, not an individual but they've still lost 26.5% of their value over that time. And I have a feeling that most of them feel justifiably like they've been busting their ass over that 15 year period to then lose more than 26% of it. Working class families, you know, they had more to lose and they did lose more, both in raw dollars and also in percentages. They lost more than half of all of the wealth that they have. Now, it's easy to say they lost more than 50%. It's easy to say they lost something like $25,000. But what they lost is security. What they lost is the family equivalent of self-esteem and hope for the future and an assurance that things will be better. And that money that they lost is money they won't spend in the future. So their loss is our loss. It's the economy's loss because now they can't go out there and spend that money, whether on a car or consumer goods putting their kids through college, maybe healthcare. And so a lot of those families, since this is just a goddamn average, some of them are doing a little bit better, some of them are doing far worse. And how much does it take for those families, now that they've lost half of the buff buffer that they possess, to suddenly have some sort of personal crisis, some sort of medical crisis? And now that family, which used to be not well off, they're middle class, but they had a little bit of money, is ruined in our economy. After 15 years of just slaving away at this economy to largely enrich the wealthiest people, which we're going to see in a few minutes, they now are on the brink of destruction, and many have, of course, already been destroyed. The middle class, 19% loss. So they're weathering it a little bit better. But again, we're talking about averages here. And so think about what it means to be on the lower end of that average. But of course, this is all an appetizer to the main event. We're not all hurting. If you look at the average, sure, we've lost 20% of our value. And if you look at the lower classes, they are certainly hurting. But it isn't equal, okay? Because the top 10% have gone from $650,000 median net worth to $1.13 million, a gain of 74.9%. They said it couldn't be done. If we look at all the numbers, it looks like how could you possibly make money in this economy when things are falling left and right, when the tax policy is being set up in a way that obviously hurts most Americans, but not all, how could you possibly make any money? Well, we're going to have to sit down with some of the top 10% because apparently they're doing quite well. And that's the top 10%. I don't have the data in front of me, but I guarantee if you were to look at the top 1%, the top 0.1%, they would make the top 9% look like chumps. And of course, a lot of this does have to do with the recession of 2007, 2008, but that is itself simply a symptom of the core cause, which is the political choices that have been made by those who lead America. Those choices have directly led to this result, and they've also indirectly led to this result through the economic recession. Now, that recession is, of course, that's the, the baby of both the Republicans and the Democrats of the 90s. They got together to deregulate important sectors of our financial system, and that led to that recession. And so you can lay a lot of the blame on Newt Gingrich and the Republicans, on George W. Bush, but also on Bill Clinton. You can take into the, this coming election whatever you want from that. And so, of course, that's one of the reasons. But the other reason is, of course, the insane tax policy that we've had. 
those numbers would not be the same if George W. Bush hadn't gotten his way and had handed trillions of dollars to the wealthiest Americans. And when you look forward to the coming election and you look at the tax plans that previously Jeb Bush had a crazy tax plan, Ted Cruz had a crazy tax plan, Donald Trump has an absolutely bananas tax plan that would hand over sums of money that would make George W. Bush look like FDR. And so from 1998 to 2013, those numbers are scary. I don't want to come back in 15 years and show you that everybody below the top 10% has, has even less of a minimal pillow stopping them from the, the hard crash that comes as our economy falls apart. And then the top 10% are effectively gods. They're effectively emperors living amongst us. But that's the tax policy that we have to look forward to under Donald Trump. Now, if we had Hillary Clinton, is that going to cure this? I don't think so, because I imagine that many of her economic advisors and her own personal economic philosophy is much more in line with her husband who helped contribute to this. Is that better than Donald Trump? Yes, it is obviously better than Donald Trump, both indirectly and directly in terms of those tax plans. This is scary shit, man. Thank God we actually have this information so that we can look at these trends over time. That's three years ago. Has it gotten better in that time? Perhaps, but also perhaps not. Has anything significant changed in terms of the economic priorities of our country? I mean, there, we're talking about like five years of Barack Obama. Let me know what you think about this information. Let me know where you think we're going to be in 15 years. Are we going to have scary chart time? Or are we going to for once be able to look at that sort of information and look at, oh my God, look at the goddamn progress we've had in our economy. Look at how we've benefited from the week, the work that we have put in over these years. Are we going to have that? I kind of doubt it.